Yeah, baby. Good morning, sir. This is the front desk. This is your two o'clock wake up call. You know, I I was very proactive. I set an alarm at one thirty to prepare myself for this moment today. It, I I would love to see a podcast where you've put in thirty minutes of prep into. I can't wait for today. Oh no 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 no! You're mistaken. <laughs> I didn't put thirty minutes of prep in. I just made sure that I was ready I... and did not miss the call. Oh, believe me, I know. I was just trying to <laughs> twist your words into a noose for you to hang yourself with. Oh, uh, look, I'm here on time. What more do you want? I mean, here on time, here late. At least you're here. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is true. I mean, you know, this is my this is my third podcast of the uh, of the week. So, you know, the last couple of days, I, well, I it's, well, just, it's very overwhelming. Technically, it's your second of the week. I mean, just right. depending where we, let's not let's not get right, into look, the you, forensic you stepped my game up. Um, let's not do forensic accounting on this thing. It it's gonna look bad for everyone, but uh, <laughs> including me. Probably. I mean, like ne- next thing you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the call, and you're gonna be like, listen, you're gonna have to pretend to talk about movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll just. I mean, no, we'll just not do that one anymore. It's all good. Or, or, or you're gonna start giving me assignments. I need you to watch this movie before <laughs> before the uh, the next call. You'd probably you'd probably. Uh, fulfill more of those assignments than the last guy did uh oh wow <laughs> listen can wow. i be salty for a week or so can i at least be salty i mean well uh, look it's fine as long as the first video you, you make me watch is daddy daycare and then we can discuss that <laughs> you want to talk <laughs> we can talk about daddy daycare <laughs> well, solid compare, movie compare that movie to uh to our real life situation here <laughs> right 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 Daddy daycare, daddy, 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 uh, Marco daycare. <laughs> <laughs> you say his name two more times, he still won't show up. <laughs> oh wow, wow, oh. yeah, somebody's bitter. <laughs> oh man, I'm having fun with it. What am I supposed to do? Uh, be mad or just laugh at it? So right, right, no, right, yeah. right. Uh, you know, it's it's a good thing that I am such a stand-up guy. <laughs> oh God, this is my nightmare: is when... that you, you, you are now fucking playing the hero card at every fucking turn. <laughs> you son and, of a bitch, and, and that, that's and you know that's the sword you have to fall on. You have to take the heat. You have to, you have to get one guy who doesn't show up, <laughs> and then the guy who replaces him will never let you live it down. So. <laughs> Somehow you lose in this situation. I've been losing. I've been losing since we decided to create <laughs> create this group like seven years ago. <laughs> I'm nothing. Uh, well. I have nothing but red in my ledger since we fucking <laughs> since we created that logo and came up with that dumb idea in in the chat. <laughs> well, and, and the funny part is, for those who don't know, we started this. Yeah, how many how many years ago really was it? I mean. I mean, without jumping on the computer, it's 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 right. it's got to be at least five. Right, right. So we started this group, and originally it was it was me, you, uh, Marco, Blake, mm-hmm. Jackie, mm-hmm. and and Drew. Drew. Right, right. So we've we've we lost Jackie through death. I mean, yeah, Jackie's oh. the only one with a doctor's note, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right, right, right. He has an excuse. Right. Uh, Drew Drew just disappeared from the face of the earth. Well, we made the joke. Like, <laughs> Mark and I made the joke. He just went out for cigarettes one day and never came home. Never, never came back, right. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see him in a couple of years. He'll come back, like, you know, hmm? he'll, uh, he'll, he'll, want, he'll want, you know, hey, daddy's home. Look, uh, I'm sure he'll answer the phone if I call. It's just that, like, you know, it's one of those things where he doesn't call, I don't call, right. he, you don't call, right. he doesn't call, you know, so whatever. He's he's now he, he's in his own – listen, he's one of those guys – one of those guys, I love Drew to death, love him to death, but he's one of those guys, right. he found a new woman, and that's become the all-consuming, lovey-dovey, I want to throw up all over the place kind of – saccharine sweet shit he's got going on over there yep. and he he's in his own world doing his own thing and he's doing right. well and uh and, you know and I, and I would say you know blake's like a 50 percenter like <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe 25 the 25 percenter in the group right. uh he, his 25 percent is slow it's just it's just a thread that we, that we have a little group chat well, well and then now you well, got marco hold on. what's funny is every time i have 
I he he wants to come over to watch a pay per view here. He offers. Right. He's like, I can I can podcast too. Like it's almost like he kind of wants to do it every now and then. But he never even shows for the up for the pay per view in time on time. No, he's, right. What am I gonna say? Okay, let's podcast beforehand, and then he still shows up at the same time, and we don't do it. So I I just uh, I just every time he throws that in there, I pretend like I didn't see it. <laughs> But, and, and, he, and I will say, in your defense, he did mention on our our little our little message before the last paper. He said maybe we could do a podcast. He mentioned it. To yeah, you. I know he does. He does. He does every now and then. And I'm just like, I just don't. Right. I I don't want to open it up to the problem where it's like if I come if if I say okay. And then say, come by right. an hour before the pay-per-view starts. And then it's the whole, like, he's he shows up 30 minutes late for the actual pay-per-view, let alone for any podcast. Then, I, then I've, like, created expectations and and s- segmented my time and set up the fucking s- the, the gear to do it with him. And then then I'm annoyed. This right. way, if we don't do it, I he's a lovely welcome guest that I can rib about the food thing. And uh, we have a good right, time. Right. Otherwise, I'm gonna be pissed at him the whole time. So, yeah. Well, you know what? I'm just my my whole point to that story was I'm here for you, pal. <laughs> that's that's yeah. what my point was. I think we're I, all, I think we're all we have left to be for each other. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> this is it. It's not like they just left me. <laughs> right. Right. This is true. It's like it's like there there was you know that picture that we have of all of us. We have that picture. Yeah. Where we're all doing like the hand signal. It, slowly, every time you look at the picture, one of them fades away. It's just going to end up being me and you in the picture. It's like Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, Back to the Future. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So, well, I'm here for you. That's that's all I wanted to say. All right. All right. Well, I, I it's it's always good to know someone's got your back. So right. Yeah. Right. Not, yeah. So, not that this isn't also part of your like your growing empire. Uh, um. True. Internet true. empire. So you're you're the one that's uh probably most invested in this uh for uh, like you you saw the light and uh you're actually uh, right. you're actually uh uh gaining something from it. So the others just kind Yeah, of... yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I enjoy talking shit, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other part. Yeah. So even look, even if nobody listens, well I will tell you though, I will tell you this. Yes. That I every week get that email from that unchartable or whatever it's called uh, about our podcast. And usually like, you know, I mean, we've talked about this all the time. We would be like, you know, number six in Croatia. And then we have been in the Dominican. Like it's, this is like eight to 10 weeks now. Every week we're ranked. Usually we're somewhere for a week or two and then we drop off. So for some reason in the Dominican, we're like eight to 10 weeks strong at like the number 50 spot we've not moved anywhere but we're number 50 there's probably only 50 podcasts but well uh, we're either that or 50. there's only 50 people listening to podcasts there and uh right yeah so i mean yeah we ha- we at least have one loyal listener somewhere so uh, it's, uh, uh, it's other probably than, johnny other than people related to us jo- but johnny does, lives in costa rica i thought uh, i think he moved to the dominican now really? i'm pretty sure he was selling his house in costa rica uh, he had sent me a picture of it. And he said, "Hey, we're selling this," and like I was going to buy it or something. Uh, <laughs> but it was beautiful. All, like his backyard was the beach, and he's, uh, he's moving, he was moving to Dominican. He's moving from one tax shelter to another. <laughs> right. I mean, the house is amazing. Right. But you know, uh, so maybe he's the one listening. Who knows? It's probably him and his wife, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So what? What did you eat today? Um, I had a smoothie. I made a smoothie out of some a smoothie. What, who are you? I know. I had a. There was some. There was like a really old bag of frozen, uh, like a a fruit mix. You know, like some banana and kiwi and right. pineapple and blah blah blah. There was like enough to make one smoothie, and it's been in there forever. Uh, so I grabbed that and uh, threw some oatmeal in there and uh, made a smoothie, and uh, it was good. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just ate it right out of the blender thing with a spoon. Oh, like an animal. You yes. didn't even try to put it in a cup. <laughs> no, nah, why make another dish? <laughs> right. You know, I don't see. I, wow. I, I, I don't. I'm civilized. I don't 
you know, exclusively deal in paper plates like you. So I'm, uh, I, I have to actually wash my dishes. So I, I chose to not create more for myself. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 uh, I use a, a cup like a, like a human. So, <laughs> well, it was thicker than drink than drinkable, you know? Yeah. So I would have, oh, whatever. I, I guess I could have used a spoon out of a cup. Uh, so, so, so that's what I've eaten today. I know you wanted to give me the business, but that's all I've had. And it wasn't even a big smoothie. It was like, a, it was like, you know, those bullet blender things. Okay, so like the little bullets, not the like a whole blender. You right, right, right. Like the whole blender. Right. Okay. So I, I, uh, yeah. so I, I technically that is just a cup. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's like you know, okay. That's not one of our portions. That's like a normal person's portion. So well, I I'm, had. A, I'm sure I'll be hungry I, later. I, I can't. I can't say that I had a smoothie. I had. Uh, you know, I had to go to work this morning. At left my house at, at three o'clock in the morning and. Somewhere around like five thirty six, I I got to work. I was at work at four o'clock, and about five or six, I I walked in the break room, and there was like bags of candy, and I was like, I don't want that. But I was hungry. I opened the fridge, and they had. You're, you're uh, you always eat candy, anyways. Every day I see you on TikTok eating. Candy. Right, but I don't. I didn't want can, like American candy. Doesn't do you know? My, I'm a snob now with the candy. So <laughs> this uh, is true. We have created yeah. a monster. <laughs> right, Halloween's going to be the, a nightmare I, in your house. <laughs> yeah, kids are going to be getting British candy and be like, "Why are we getting all this British candy at this guy's house?" You're going to uh, give them everything you you got sent that you don't like. <laughs> Half, half eaten Kit Kat bars. All the and- all the to- all the toffees and uh, yeah. whatever you didn't yeah. like. <laughs> uh, that's a good idea. Uh, the, so I I saw the candy and I was like oh, I don't want candy. I opened the fridge and they had chicken salad chick. You ever had that? Chicken salad what? Chick. That's the name of the the, the restaurant. Oh, it's a oh chain. no, it's never a, never heard of that. I heard the chicken chick- salad place. Chick Fil A. So, no, it's a chicken salad place. They got like twenty different kinds of chicken salad. Ah, so, so you can just you can just visit twenty days in a row and work your way down the menu. Right, and and if you get it, they tell you like you know there's no carbs in chicken salad, and they That's tell you a lie. Well, no, no, because they have they have like uh, some of them do, some of them do because they put like you know crazy shit in them. But then yeah, yeah. the buffalo the buffalo chicken yeah is is uh, like one carb yeah per. You know, well, what do you care? You're eating it. fucking candy bars every day. Right. I was just pretending that I cared. <laughs> <clears throat> so I ate a chicken salad. I grabbed a box out because they were like boxes from last night that they had for the team. And uh, I was like, oh, leftovers. And I just grabbed one. It was chicken salad with grapes in it. Yeah. Like who? Is that a normal thing? I, I mean, everything is these days. They, well, I mean, I ate the shit out of ever it. Ever since, ever since some lunatic got high and put pineapple on pizza, like in the fucking or eighties or yeah. or late seventies, it's all been fair game ever since. You got you, you'll find raisins in the craziest fucking foods. I mean, yeah, it's it's yeah, yeah. So, chicken I mean, salad, really... with, with, like I've I've seen like uh, I've seen chicken salad with chunks of apple. In oh, it. interesting. You know, like di- small diced chunks of apple. I assume it's a similar idea. Uh, to have yeah, I mean, it was grapes. fantastic. I, I, I ate it all. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, I got home and I was starving. And it was like in the bean, it was like 11 o'clock. I made, I went to Publix. And for those who don't know, Publix is a supermarket down here in the South. Uh, I got, I bought this. You know they're they're known for their bread and their bakery, but I bought like a, a piece of bread that they you know they baked. It was like must have just come fresh out of the oven because it was still hot and it was soft and big giant roll like long you know like a long sub roll. And I got turkey, salami, ham, provolone cheese, and mayo, and just loaded that up. Uh, I ate it and it was bigger than a foot long. It was it was definitely uh, like a foot long and a half, but. Uh, it was amazing, but here's the issue. Yeah. It's now, what time is it? 2.15? I have the worst heartburn and <laughs> acid reflux ever. From what? So I'm, I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm just, 
I cannot eat carbs. Like this is this is a sign. Like I've got to stop eating. See, carbs. I can, I only get it once I uh, start to eat uh, mostly just red sauce, to, tomato sauce. I just I just took a Pepsi just now, right there while you were talking. <laughs> I heard you swallow. <laughs> I had to. I'm dying. It's um like it's literally, it's killing me. You know, you you talking about that giant sandwich that you made out of a loaf of bread. Uh, I uh, it reminded me. There's that legendary. Uh, yeah. Did I ever tell you the, the story of uh, Elvis and the Fool's Gold? No, what's that? Okay, so apparently there's a story that uh, uh, there's this place in Denver that makes a sandwich called Fool's Gold, and it's a okay. uh, it's a lo- it's like an Italian loaf, you know, and they use the entire right. loaf, they cut it open, they put a pound of bake cooked bacon in there, they put peanut butter and jelly in there. And then they seal it all up, and you're good to go. Uh, apparently, they're so good that Elvis got his boys on a jet, and they flew to uh, Denver, probably from uh, Graceland uh, or or the surrounding area, uh, just to get sandwiches. He had them meet him on the tarmac or in the hangar in Denver with like sandwiches for everyone and and champagne, and they flew to Denver just for these sandwiches. <laughs> ate them and then wow. flew, the, flew the fuck home. So I, my plan is always to uh if I go to ever go to uh Denver is to see if this place still exists and uh it, what, what is it called? I don't know. I'd have to like I'd have to go on I'd have to google like that stuff, you know, like like who 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 uh made the sandwiches. But uh I remember it wasn't that I I heard about it. It was it was on like one of those like TV shows where they interviewed some people and they were talking about this trip. Mm. Yeah, so it like actually happened. I mean, not not for nothing. I I mean, I don't know if I would follow Elvis's diet. No, I'm not. I mean, who's to say we aren't right now? Mm. <laughs> I mean, you're you're yeah. you're chewing exotic chocolates every day. What are you telling? What, what is, you know? <laughs> It's not like you have to eat the entire sandwich all at once. I mean, fool's gold sounds great, even in my. Yeah, I, I, either... I found it. I found it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, you're Googling. Fool's me. gold loaf. Yeah. Fool's gold loaf is a sandwich made by the Colorado Mine Company, a restaurant in Denver. The sandwich consists of a single warmed, hollowed out loaf of bread filled with the contents of one jar of creamy peanut butter. Oh, hold on. One jars. jar wow. of. Grape jelly and a pound of bacon. See, and I was, we wonder why this guy fucking died on the toilet bowl. I was, I was, I was a hundred percent accurate on that. My, I mean, that's how much of an impact that story had on me. I heard about this like fifteen years ago, and I've never forgotten a detail of it since. I knew the, I knew the entire recipe of that. Um, yeah, I mean, Elvis took his friends on a private jet from Graceland. They purchased 30 sandwiches and uh-huh. spent two hours eating them with Perrier and champagne before flying home. Man, the I story kn- became a legend. I nailed that story. <laughs> you nailed it. We, I mean, listen, once you become real internet famous, I think we have to just reenact that. We rent a fucking jet. We fucking we call ahead. Re- well, you know how much it is? What? $50. $50 for a sandwich. Worth every penny. It's a, it's a whole... Oh, no. Wait. Hold on. In, no. It was $50 a sandwich when he bought it. It's now $220 a sandwich. <laughs> That's what funny. the fuck? Dude, it's like, listen. This is this is bucket list material right here. Like, to walk in the footsteps of, of Elvis and do this legendary thing. Um, I just don't want to die in a toilet. Well, we don't, don't make a <laughs> habit of it. <laughs> I mean, anything once is fine, you know? Right. I mean, they probably sprinkled cocaine in theirs. I can't really say one way or the other, but I wouldn't be surprised. So uh, I don't think it was the sandwich that killed him. I think it was the sandwich and everything else he ate every other day of the week and all the drugs and all the women and all the drinking. I think we're good. I think if we went, we'd be fine. Well, it's funny because as I was searching that, it came up. Uh, the first article said Elvis Presley's diet was extremely disturbing, uh, it, and it, it had lists what his favorite foods were. Like the his fried food was peanut butter banana sandwich. Uh, right? Peanut peanut butter and banana sandwich was his favorite. Yeah, I know my shit, uh, the man. Sec- 
His second was the Fool's Gold Loaf. <laughs> I love that they call it loaf. <laughs> right. The, well, it's a whole loaf. Right. I know. Was, this, this is great. So <laughs> I don't even know what this is. He he liked meatballs, and he had a sandwich he, ca- he called, or he called them the party meatballs. But the par- party meatballs was in quotations. So now maybe you are right. Maybe he threw a little cocaine on the meatballs. Yeah. Because... Why, why would they be called party meatballs? In, in like, yeah, in quotations. Oh, here, it, it describes it. These scrumptious meatballs were made by his longtime chef, Mary Jenkins Langston. She would wrap his meatballs in bacon. This fucking guy was an animal. <laughs> I, I mean, why do you think they call him the king? Wow. His fourth favorite thing, this is all from his chef, fried breakfast. I mean, I mean, he okay. liked all of his breakfast fried, no matter what it was. She had to fry it, whether it was the sausage, the bacon, the eggs, the potatoes, everything must be fried. And he always had baked rolls and a coffee. I mean, he's not wrong that everything tastes better fried. This guy, I, listen, you're I feel like you're trying to, like, slander the man or, or besmirch him or 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 <laughs> or like somehow give him the critical eye here all i'm hearing are wonderful things like this guy was an inventor like thomas edison but just in the culinary industry i mean he you know uh this is wonderful stuff i mean everything he ate was fried fried he liked meatloaf okay yeah Ma, he liked meatloaf. salmon, but everything else was fried yeah well he's from the south he said he would take he would take uh he he wanted caviar but he he used to call it uh, just pretend Harvard Texas caviar because he wouldn't use the fish eggs, so he used he would use black eyed peas <laughs> instead of the fish eggs. That is radically different. What an animal! Wow, yeah, it's good to know. I mean, my I always respected him, but it's growing and growing here. Just in the, just right, right, right. Just during this podcast. Yeah. So wow. yeah. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's bucket list material to do the fool's gold, a- and it's good to hear that they're still around, like that we can make this happen. Yeah, well, they said there's a lot of places now that do it too. Yeah, but I mean, you got to go to the source. You got to go to the, right, right. You got to go to the granddaddy, the one you always got to honor the one that started it all. Yeah, I, yeah, that's pretty. This this could be, you know, and it would be great if we could. And, and, and again, I know we talked about this. Just if we could get somebody to bite and do like like some sort of food tour, even if if we had the money or we had a backer where we could just tour the United States first and just visit places and do food tours and film it for YouTube, it probably would be a hit. But, you know, somebody's got to back us. So if somebody's out there listening that has a lot of money and wants to waste it. Yeah, I've always, <laughs> we'll I've it. always learned it's wise not to self-fund your, your crazy ideas. Yeah, right, right. We, somebody else has to pay for this one. Yeah. So, but yeah, that'd be pretty cool if we could just tour and do like, you know, a, a, like obscure food places like that, or even some hole in the walls that, like, you know, I, I've driven so much in this, you know, between California and and all the places I've driven here on the East Coast, going to work and taking back roads, and there'd be times where I drive by and see like a little shack, and I'd be like, oh, I'll go in, and it was like the best, like. Yeah, I think you and I, I both. And I'm like, you and I both have a nose for that. I've I've right. been able to find those places down here. Yeah, and people don't even know about them. And even like some of the TV shows don't even talk. You know, they don't go. They don't know those places. Yeah, and you know, end up getting the best cheeseburger. And it's funny talking about cheeseburgers. So I was in a. This we're, is when I was in. A, we weren't talking about cheeseburgers. You no, just... we weren't. But we are now. <laughs> <laughs> I. uh when I worked in in South Carolina, I remember one day I was like looking for some good food, and someone said, "You got to go to the bowling alley." And I said, "The bowling alley," and they're like, "You got to go to the bowling alley." I'm telling you right now, go to the bowling alley. The bowling alley has the best cheeseburgers, and I, they said, was "But it, there's a rest." Was it called not from like the bowling alley, and it was a restaurant, or was it a bowling? No. Alley? It was a bowling alley with a restaurant inside right. the bowling alley. But what, now, what, what was the bowling the... alley called? Oh, I don't remember. Okay, what okay. It was called. I didn't. But okay. but the re- but the it wasn't. They're like you can't go to the counter 
not to like the concession stand. There's a restaurant like attached to the bowling alley. You go to that. So I go in and it's like, it was like, you know, this is a couple of years ago. It was like 1970 in there. And I was like, oh my God. Like, it was like I walked back into time. And even the people working there looks like they hadn't changed their clothes. Like, it was just weird. It had like a really weird smell and feel. And the booths were like bright orange, like, you know, like bowling alley booths. And uh, I said, well, someone sent me here. They said I got to get the cheeseburger. They're like, it'll be the best one you ever had. It was the best fucking cheeseburger I ever had in French fries. Still? At just some shitty ass bowling alley. Still? Uh, it's got to be top three. Mm. Easily. Mm easily and it was like i mean it was just a shady like it was it was sketch like it was a sketchy like creepy bowling alley and it just was like was, you never would think to go there and eat they a uh, cheeseburger that <laughs> that was when i was in la with my friend steve he's like we got to go to the doctor's office i'm like what the fuck what are you what are you talking about he goes the doctor's mm-hmm. office has the best burgers and i'm like okay it's a place called doctor's office we go to this place it's like off the beaten path it doesn't even have a sign out front. You walk in, it's like a tiny dive bar. There's like, when you walk in, there's like, to your right is the bar, and to the left is like some tables. But there's not a lot of room in the place. It's tiny. And you sit at the bar, and and there was actually a line before they opened at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you go in, and, and they made the burger. And it was the best one I had out there, that's for sure. And this was like 15 years ago, so... Uh, it, and you wonder, I wonder if it's still there. It probably is. Those types of places, they're, they're, they're like cockroaches. I, where yeah. they were, I don't think rent's ever going to go up. I don't think the neighborhood's ever going to change. And they have a loyal, like, you know, following. They're like, they don't have to advertise. They don't even need a sign. People just word of mouth. It's just there and they've got a loyal base. I'm sure it's still there unless they got taxed out of existence. Because it's California. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm Googling as we speak here because I feel like uh, the doctor's office, Holmes Beach, Florida? That's no. not it. No, in L.A. The doctor's office is a, is a restaurant in Florida now. No L.A. The L.A. one looks like it uh, doesn't exist, pal. Maybe, maybe it never did. Yeah, maybe you dreamt this. No, maybe they're just uh, under. Maybe they were just never an official business. They're just like on the on the hush hush. You know, right, nobody nobody needs to know. You know, don't, don't answer right. the door I, when the census man is knocking. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I think I had talked about it when I went to Texas a couple months ago. Uh, I ate at this. We asked somebody like where the best cheeseburger was, and the guy was like, "If you walk down, uh, you know, we were in Austin, Texas. Walk down." You know, all the way to the end of the strip, and then on the right is a dive bar. Uh, go in there. And we're like, we're walking in. You know, I'm with my boss, and, you know, it's like, you know, a couple of us. And, and you know, sometimes, my, my boss is a New Yorker, but sometimes, you know, he, you know, he's a little, not that he's bougie, but, you know, he's probably makes a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot of money and eating at a dive bar. I don't know. So, like, he's kind of, like, sketched out a little bit, and we're walking, walking, and we get there. And it's, I mean, it's literally a fucking hole in the wall. And uh, he's like, all right, let's try it. We walk in and they got, this is the one that had the porn playing on the TV. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the cheeseburger, uh, it was called Casino El Camino. That's what the name of it was, Casino El Camino. And uh, they, you walk in and we're like, it's a bar. And they're like, you're like, you guys like want to drink? And he's like, no, we heard you guys got good cheeseburgers. He goes, you got to go to the back. You had to walk through the bar to the back, and there's this little window with this giant, this just fat giant guy who's dressed like he's like a death metal, uh, death metal. Like it, he looked like a like a he was dressed like he was like a twelve year old like death metal fan, but he was like fifty. Oh, I was uh, and, when you describe got to go to the back of the window. I'm picturing a uh, calypso at the Polish American Club. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you know, no, and he, and he he was at this little window by himself and. He was slinging cheeseburgers, man, and uh, that was cheeseburger was out of this world, like out of this world. And you would never, who would ever go in there and think of that, right? You know, you would never do that. You'd yeah. never go in there and be like, "I'm gonna get a cheeseburger from this stinky dive bar." But yeah, so we should do a food tour. Who wants to sponsor us? That's the question. <laughs> I think I think the only way we get sponsored is 
uh, people willing to uh, donate their couches for the night while we're in town. I think that's about as much uh, a contribution as we can get. Uh, these that's guys. it. Yeah. Well, you know, we could here. Here's here's an idea. Here's a wacky idea that I'm just gonna put out into yeah. the fucking universe, and maybe it'll come true. Is that you and I should just uh, produce a fucking episode. Uh, either down here or up there or or maybe both, uh, cut together a 24-minute or however long a half-hour episode is, uh, and then uh, do a uh, do a GoFundMe to do the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. You know, and they just – we know that we're going to do it on the super cheap and that our profit will come later if we put commercials on it and it, or you know monetize it on youtube or something but as long as our nut is covered to go to these places and stay like overnight or for a day or two and hit all the fucking joints and pay for the food uh you know that that's an idea yeah if you want to if you if if in 2022 you uh you know again you're gonna be a big shot you're gonna i i know i I think you've slowed down on your growing on TikTok the last couple of days because you've been slacking. But uh, I think. Oh no! Today's been a big day, my friend. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, but once if you get five hundred thousand, we're we're gold because any any town we hit uh, to uh, right to do our TV stuff, we can also do a little meet and greet somewhere and sell some shirts and uh, and uh, you know get our beak wet, so to speak. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, I think it could be done. I don't see why it couldn't be. Oh, it could be done. The problem is I'd have to do everything. So I like oh, these. Man, are yeah. These are all great ideas, but I don't hear you arguing that you're going to contribute 50 percent of the work and effort uh, towards making this happen. So uh, you'd have to convince me to commit to it. <laughs> As, I mean, look as, look as like I said earlier in this episode, I am my ledger is dripping with red. So uh, there's you're gonna have to really convince me this is a good idea. <laughs> so here's the here's the thing here's the thing. We can, look. I'll even give you a title. I'll call you my manager. <laughs> there. So, and then you'll have a title at least, so you won't just you know you won't be doing this for nothing. Listen, I I feel like I would be. I, <laughs> I feel like I am. I I have that unofficial title already. If I if you're gonna start throwing titles around like a like a you know like that, I I'd make you sign a paper so that you can't then <laughs> then hire a real hire a real manager when you fucking get to be Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> Once you hit a million fucking TikTok whatevers, uh, then you try and dump me, like uh, a <laughs> for a real manager. In yeah, there. for yeah. someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> you know what? You'll always be my honest John. Don't worry. <laughs> awesome. Mm-hmm. When when I get too fat and can't change my can't take my shoes off and change my pants, you'll help me. <laughs> Hopefully, <we'll... laughs> just like I'm Jewel as a butcher. <laughs> this is sounding more glamorous by the second. What a sales pitch you're, you're fucking sling, <laughs> slinging over there. The funny part is, is like as I say that to you, immediately in my head, the image popped up of Abdullah the Butcher sitting in his un- white underwear, and they were like, it, I, I, this moment has been stuck in my brain and will never go away to the point I can tell you. I can literally tell you everything about that situation. That three minute situation, I can tell you everything. I can tell you that he was wearing white boxer shorts that were, the cloth was very thin, white boxer shorts, like see through, and the button was open, and he was sitting on a chair, chewing on a cigar, not smoking it, he was chewing it, mm. just gnawing on the cigar, mm-hmm. while Honest John was, <laughs> was behind him getting all his stuff ready to get it, put his clothes on him and dress him. Yeah. He was getting it all ready. And honest John was in his full, you know, slacks, sneakers. Uh, he had a t-shirt on and a, he always wore a sport coat over the t-shirt and a hat. And the hat was the Abdullah, the butcher, uh, from the restaurant, right. the rib shack hat. Yeah. And, uh, honest John was, was, uh, was getting all the stuff ready to dress Abdullah. He sat there with his hands and legs open, like spread fat, like he was sitting in that fat man pose with his hands on his knees 
and he and he was telling us to take his bags downstairs, uh, and then he would be dressed and down in a minute. And I will never forget that image. It's fucking I'm, burned in my brain. Now I'm picturing me having to do this for you while you're right. like 300, f- 350 pounds, sweating fucking bacon grease and s- maple syrup from every pore of your body. And just, no, I think, I think I'll pass on the manager fucking title. <laughs> you know what? I'll stick with friend. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that's a good yeah. that's a good title for me. I don't. I'm not aspiring for any quote promotions. Unquote. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. The day I gotta no. dress you. Oh my god. Let alone change. We're gonna need to hire a manager then. <laughs> yeah, we do. I think you don't understand what a manager does. <laughs> what? I think you don't understand what a manager does. They, they don't dress people. No. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> They probably hire someone when when you if you get to that <laughs> if you get to that part point you bet you got you're hiring someone or you're no longer in business. One one or the <laughs> other. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, for now, I think step one is still the inflatable pool, and I'm gonna order you like fifty cans of beans, and we'll see where that takes us. <laughs> we'll start there. Yeah, I mean, let's let's baby step. It's not not like listen. We don't want to be like, hey, I've got an idea. Let's let's start a wrestling promotion. Let's run our first show at the fucking War Memorial. That's a great idea. Um, you know, so uh, let baby step it. Let's let's find some smaller places first. And yeah, 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 yeah. So, <sighs> what else you got? Uh, what else you got for me? No, that's it. I mean, I, I just uh, I got nothing else. I mean, you're you're asking for three times a week now, pal. <laughs> I thought maybe there'd be another Indian food update. I I feel like we talked. No, about no, no. I, I, I didn't get a chance to go over that way. Uh, maybe maybe this week at some point. Maybe we'll I, see. I uh, I feel like he's gonna take I, you on Mister Toad's wild ride. I I know he's probably looking for me, like wondering where I've been this week. It's like I've got we're, we're we got to work our way down the menu, friend. We're we're, no. at, we're at item three now, but I did I I haven't been to my British store in a week, so that may be tomorrow actually, uh, or Thursday. I may have to stop at the British store. So and uh, I, you know I got I got to spread now, my love everywhere. Now let me ask you a question: When you go to the British yeah. store, are you calling ahead or are you just showing up? So I, I the last time <laughs> I uh, I, just I love showed the up. pause. I love the pause. <laughs> well, so the first time I called ahead, the second time I just showed up, and when I walked in. I walked in, I walked to the back. Everybody was like, hey, hey. I was like, hey. And then she was like, the lady's like, hello, mate. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, she's like, oh, you get to meet my mother. And then like she introduced her mom, her mom, that's yeah. what she said. And then she's like, she's like, uh, introduced me. And then literally in one, like, it was like, here's my mom. And then I turn around and she's literally handing me a cup of tea. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like one. It was oh, like, okay. Like, I thought maybe you, uh, I thought maybe the first time you got a better treatment because they knew you were coming. So and then you decided. See, that's what I was trying to bait you into saying you were going to call ahead because. No. Oh, but no. Oh, okay, no. okay, okay. They, and she gave me the cup of tea, and uh, we sat there, and and then she she gave me some biscuits, and yeah, it was a nice little. We had a nice little tea session. Yeah. And uh, like it's and and the funny part is is I was like, man, I always thought that was just like in the movies. This is real. Like you guys really stop in the middle of the day to have tea and biscuits. Like this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's their version of a of a siesta, right? Why in America we don't have that? We just work until we die, and then yeah, no, we, we don't enjoy life. The bell goes off. You've got fifteen minutes twice, a, right. Twice a shift to uh, take your shits and smoke your cigarettes and and whatever. You get half an hour for lunch, but none of that counts towards oh. your eight hours working, right? <laughs> uh. So yeah, so yeah, no, it was a. Uh, it was, it was lovely, as they say. It was lovely. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna start just. I'm gonna start calling you mate. How about that? Me? Yeah. I mean, you could try. I don't know if it's gonna stick. It's, I'm gonna start talking like it. I, and I, I told you guys in this last podcast, someone commented and was like, they thought they look at me and they they said over like the time of my videos that I'm starting to look like I'm from the UK. I was like, what? They like like I'm morphing into a British person. I'm I, I'm trying to think what that entails. I don't even know. I literally. Like, I want to make. I want to make a a, t- a teeth joke. 
but uh, maybe I don't want to piss off your following. <laughs> well, I, I looked in the mirror and I was like, I don't get it. Like, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> but yeah, apparently I look like uh, I look like I'm turning British. Maybe people are just now commenting to to get the rub. To get, they just want you to acknowledge them in some way. Well, speaking of the rub, we'll end it with this. Yeah. Uh, and, and this, I really, I don't think I've really told you this, but so, you know, obviously the rub is is. The, getting the rub is, you know, you, you ask somebody, uh, well, how would you how would you explain getting the rub? The rub is when um, it well in wrestling, it's when you work with someone uh, bigger, more popular than you, and you kind of get they call it getting the rub, which means that uh, it almost like acknowledges that you're worthy to be elevated. You know what I mean? Um, right. I, that, that, is that a good way to describe it? Right. Yeah. So yeah, we. Yeah. So anytime we say, "Oh, you're getting the rub," it's like, it's like if if I was like joking and I I was hanging out with my brother for the day, uh, I was like, "Yeah, I was giving him the rub." He could see me see he could be seen with me in public or something like that. That kind, you know, that kind of jokey kind of thing. Um, but it, it's a lot of different ways you can use it. Um, but like. Like for we were joking about calling a podcast the rub and it was gonna be we were gonna have guests on and either they were benefiting from us getting exposure or we were benefiting because they were way bigger than us that they would bring their people to uh, be exposed yeah. to us once or twice. It was a it, it's a funny joke for a name of a show uh, and it would apply for whatever we were planning to do at the time. But we never really uh, got into that one yet. So so oh uh, so go ahead with your rub thing because so, I think I've over so, confused I've over complicated it yeah you've confused everybody right yeah. uh, so so lately because you know I'm I'm gaining a little popularity uh, I've started getting like really weird messages on like Instagram and 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 TikTok and and the Instagram ones are always like because Instagram okay TikTok you can't send somebody a message unless you both follow each other but right. Instagram. They can send you a message. So yeah. I've been getting messages on Instagram like, hey, hey, here's my TikTok username. You don't follow me. You should follow me. Like, what? Like, who does that? Right? So, like, I get a lot of that where people are, like, begging me to follow them. But then I go to their page and they have no content. I'm like, why would I follow you? You have zero videos. Well, like, it doesn't make any sense. But you also get, like, people that have, like, like you – that have like only 200 followers that want to do something with you collab or something like that. And in that case, they're seeking the rub from you, you know? Right. Right. You right. Know. Right. So, so like, but I get a lot of that. And then, and, and look, I try to follow, like if your shit is entertaining, I will follow you. Like, yeah. but you know, so I get a lot of that. I but, do people really so, look at, at uh, who other people, I guess maybe they do. I they look at what it. the bit, well, Let's say the the people with like ten or a hundred million followers, right? And they only have a list of like ten people they're following. I feel like those people have been like granted Chosen some kind be, of right. like special award, and uh, and people will look at those people and uh, well, but, and, but, and see who they are, that, right? But you know. I, I just like I, a couple of them had like no videos. So I was like, what do you want me to follow you for? You don't have any videos. Uh, but that's not even the, that's just the beginning of it. So I started getting those and it's always on Instagram and they tell me to go follow their TikTok, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then I get, I'll, I'll get like comments where people are like, respond to my comment or like, Hey, go check out my video and do edit. Uh, you know, and it's something that I would never do it anyway. Um, but then this is the best part. People asking me for money <laughs> that don't know me. So that's the new thing where like I'll get a message and be like, hey, like I know you're a big creator. And I'm like, what? Yeah, I fucking make no money doing this. And they'll be like, hey, uh, you know, I lost my house. Can you just I need I need to pay rent or something. Can you donate a uh, hundred dollars to me? Here's I'm, my GoFundMe. I'm literally going to. I'm literally going to start sending people that message. <laughs> all, well, but, but it's all like, you have to do yeah. is strike gold once or someone right, or a big right. name goes, Hey, this person's having a hard time. Go, uh, go check out their GoFundMe. I mean, you but, see, you, know, and, you and see that thing, like, sometimes, you know, 
Right. And if you have a GoFundMe and it's a legit cause, like, you know, I, I would donate, but no, you a, a couple of them were like, uh, well, I'm going to, no, nope, I'm going to tell a story about that in a second. Oh, boy. So I, uh, but like the last couple I got were like, hey, hey, lost my job uh, and I need lunch money. Can you send me 20 bucks to my Venmo? I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Like, like, and I'm not being a dick. It's just I don't know you. Number one, number two, uh, no proof that they're you know, like I don't know. I don't know anything about these people. Like, but uh, but yeah, asking for money. But uh, I'm talking about like I I would donate to a good cause. So yesterday, I was watching uh, the news in the morning and I saw a building in Atlanta, like an apartment complex, blew up, and I was like, holy shit! Like that's insane, and it blew up. Wow. And then uh, later in the day, I get a text message, and it's from one of my store managers, and he's like, hey, uh, this girl, Jamie, or she's an assistant manager, Jamie, uh, her house blew up. And I was like, wait, what? And I looked at the GoFundMe, and I'm like, oh, shit, that was her house in the news. She was inside. There was a gas leak at the apartment next door. They were, like, attached, and it blew up. Uh, now she's she's alive and everything, but um, I I immediately went and donated. She lost everything. Like to me, that's something that like a I can, I know it's it's true, and b you know I know her, uh, but I donated a hundred bucks to her because she's literally lost everything. Um, yeah, but you knew that. And I reposted it. You knew that person, you, but that's what you I'm didn't, saying. You, right. didn't, you didn't see something uh, blow up on TV and and feel compelled to donate to random people. Hard no, on but, but on TikTok, here, my point of this was is on TikTok, I've donated a couple times. If like like a Scott D Henry or or JT Layborn, these guys got millions of followers, and they post about something and they tell the story of what happened. The person's sick. The kid is sick. This that like, and you can you know. You can verify that it's true. I've donated. Yeah, Sometimes I'm not, only twenty five bucks. I'm not buying bucks, it. I'm not but, buying it. I, I I need to see receipts. But 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 I've I've done that. But like for people to ask me for money that I like, and the one guy literally was like, "I need lunch." Who the fuck are you coming to for? Like, what do I look like? You know, you want lunch? You, I don't. You better go. If he's hitting up a total stranger, out, <laughs> he's really like like you have run through all your fucking known contacts. And you're still, you still couldn't find uh, anyone willing to buy you lunch. Uh, what's right. gonna, what's going to convince you? Right, but here was my thing. I, I had said you just said it, and I said it to someone. Uh, I said, if they asked twenty people in one bites, they just got free lunch. <laughs> it didn't cost yeah. them anything. Yeah, and those those are copy paste yeah. things. You could you could probably ask a thousand people over the course of a couple right. of hours. Right, right, right. So you could be. I yeah. mean, that's that's easier begging than than like down here, standing on the street corners begging because it's fucking hot and humid. Uh, this is this yeah. is uh these are how the smart people are scamming. <sighs> right, right, right. So yeah, and uh, here we just got a, a Marco just made a post on our thread. Norm Macdonald died today. The actor, really, the comedian. Huh? Not. Yeah. Yeah, he uh. He was sick, though, wasn't he? I don't know if he was sick. He just didn't look healthy. He was kind of puffy and, you know, I don't know. Oh, yeah, well, here, I just looked it up. Nine-year battle with cancer that he kept a secret. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe that's why he yeah. always looked a little strange. He was in, yeah. be in between wow. this, that, or the other. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's that's tough. Uh, thanks for uh, yeah. thanks for bringing the podcast down as we... Uh, as we wind up, well, it's all ended. Th thanks for yeah. thanks for ending it up with a big old fat bummer. Yeah. There, you're you're well, you really know how to do this. Well, you're, look, you're I'll, hell of a I'll, 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 I'll end it with this. You're I'll hell of a broadcaster. I'll, I'll watch NXT tonight so that I can come to our wrestling podcast. Now is, we, we're now a wrestling podcast on. Here's on, here's my idea: is that we don't yeah. have a wrestling podcast. But that at the end of the podcast, in case we don't want to alienate anyone, at the end, if we feel like talking about wrestling on any given podcast, we save it till the end. And then if you don't want to listen to us talk about wrestling for five or 10 or 20 minutes, uh, you won't miss anything else. Does that well, sound? I mean, does that sound like good? Why can't we just talk about 
No. Uh, we talk about wrestling. No, if no, they don't no. like it, fuck them. No, because here's why. Because there's wrestling every fucking day. So you want to wait a whole week to talk about everything that happened that week? Or do you just want to talk about it as it happened? Like we could talk right now. We could talk about Raw. Uh, we could talk about uh, Big E getting the belt. We could talk about how that was panic, bad booking. We could talk about all that stuff because by the time we actually do the next podcast, at least one other show happens and now we forget stuff. That, that That's my point. Does it make any sense to you or you just uh, want to, no, I, you just want, no. because here's the other thing. I don't want the next one to be a wrestling pot, like specific podcast, because I was thinking we call Bobby and he finally tells a story about uh, selling his kidney on eBay. We've been, t- I mean, that's wrestling, right? <laughs> well, I mean, he, he, he was a wrestler. I don't know that putting your kidney on eBay had anything to do with pro wrestling. <laughs> eh, come on. It's a very pro wrestling thing to do, uh, but uh, you know, I don't know. We'll discuss it. We'll discuss it off the air. All right, all right. Because I, I you know, I'm the smart. I'll be watching guy. NXT tonight, though, seeing what the new NXT looks like. Yeah, I mean, don't you know? I mean, uh, I, I, I thought. See, they're teasing like this whole rebranding thing. I thought it would be brilliant if they were trolling everyone and they were just trying to pop the ratings. And get people to tune right. in if when you tune in tonight, they didn't change shit. The logos. I have a feeling, though, they will. The logos still the same. The set's the same. <clears throat> Every yeah. uh, The roster's the same. They just, like, that would be funny to me. If you promoted for a month that you were rebranding, and then when they come, <laughs> there's no, they, you know, we just, we, we tricked you into tuning in. There's no uh, <laughs> Come on, that would be fun. I, I will say that I have a feeling I'm going to be totally bored watching the show, though. Also, so. also, um, oh, probably. I think they're making it into a kid's show. I mean, with that Nickelodeon color scheme. Right, uh, they'll have slime coming down from the ceiling. Yeah, Who fucking yeah. knows? When, when they, they say, every time they say pro wrestling instead of sports entertainment, someone gets slimed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the other thing I was, I was, uh, was that argument well that misunderstanding that Blake had with me uh on the on the thread today when he started bringing up uh people whose contracts are coming up and I said that that's my uh that's my uh, Sasha Banks theory is that uh that she uh she got pulled off of TV entirely like she was supposed to work right. she was supposed to wrestle for the title uh on SummerSlam and the week leading up, she was supposed to have a couple matches with Bianca Belair, who had the title. Uh, you know, they call them house 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 shows or dark matches. They're non televised events. Uh, you know, the, you know, they get a little practice for the big big pay per view, and uh, they canceled those matches. Uh, right. and, we're, and we're a little mysterious on why those two weren't going to be at the shows, and then. Uh, Bianca Belair like pretty much lost the belt in two seconds to Becky, who was filling in for Sasha, who wasn't there. And yeah, I was the whole thing was weird, right? And so I was a little suspicious. I thought maybe Bianca Belair got injured, and that's why they didn't do the house shows. And that's why she lost the belt in two seconds. But then she continued to be on the shows and wrestle, and Sasha's nowhere to be found. And so I thought because nothing's come out about it, like if there was drama, if she was causing problems or there was a fight or something you'd have you'd have heard about it you always hear about it there's no like secrecy in the wwe um but they keep saying how uh the wwe's been like sleeping on people's contracts and getting caught with their shorts down that i'm thinking maybe they tried they saw that uh sasha's is up in the next year within a year six months to a year and they wanted to get, get ahead of it and just extend her now or start discussions be, and give them plenty of time to work with her agent or whatever. Uh, and that way you have months to like go back and forth with negotiations or whatever. And I have a feeling Sasha shut them down and said, I have no interest in negotiating an extension. And they just yanked her and they're just going to. Right. Because they don't want her on and TV. They're gonna, and they just benched her for the, the remaining of her contract. Uh, now, that's the only thing that's making sense to me now, because she would she didn't uh, if she was injured they would say if there was like some kind of heat 
or drama, it would have leaked out from someone. Um, this is very like very bizarre. And she was like, uh, that same week that all this happened with the not doing the house shows and not be on pay-per-view yeah. that like within a week of that, there was a uh, episode of hot ones, which anyone doesn't know. It's like a chicken wing eating interview show where you eat these chicken wings and answer questions in between each one and the wings get hotter and hotter. And it's, it's a great show, but she came and did a special episode where she and the host just ate that pocky chip, that one chip challenge that you, right. and, you and I and Billy have done and, and Eric and uh, and, but and I'm like thinking that had to have been filmed within this time frame. They wouldn't have sat on it for like you know six months. That that like if she filmed this chip thing, it would have come out within a week or two. You know, with editing. Um, so it's very weird. She's not she's not hurt. We we nobody knows anything. Uh, so that's my like conspiracy theory. I don't know what you think. Uh. Yeah, I I think that's probably spot on because they fucked up so many times prior to this one. Yeah, but I think <laughs> somebody like, was like, "Hey, they're yeah. all they're all well, right. they're all different." Like they forgot to sign Cole. They totally forgot when his contract was up. Everyone got caught unawares. Even Cole didn't know when his contract was up. Uh, he signed a right. tiny extension to finish the storyline and then left. You've got like three or four guys are talking about who have contracts due within the next like six months. And it doesn't sound like the WWE's reached out to any of them about this. And I'm just like thinking yeah. that this that that maybe the Sasha thing is a contract thing in the other way. Like they did want to lock her in early and uh for a few more years and she was like, I have no intentions of staying and they're like, Well then we're not gonna platform you for the next however long. Wait, because why would you put it on TV? Well, like I mean why would you? Well, if you've got like eight months left, you could still make a lot of money with her. Yeah, I guess. It's not like, I it's, it's not, it, 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 I don't think it. it's the day and age, especially with social media, where you could stay relevant, uh, where if you're off TV for six months, everyone's going to forget you. It's not even like, even the name change, nobody cares about, or or it, it doesn't hurt these people anymore, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So I think WWE is, again, operating with an antiquated mindset towards this type of action. Right. Uh, but again, if, but, if, yeah. it, again, if you don't want to be here, then maybe they were like, well, we've got plenty of people who do. Why, why waste time right. on TV? Why waste our time on you? Our time on you, but also waste time on these shows that is highly coveted and valued and hard to get uh, and give it to someone else who's here. You know who wants to be here? No, well, it makes sense. Makes sense. So uh, that's my conspiracy theory. I don't know if it's. Yeah. But to me, it's it's the only of of the general like traditional things that happen. Uh, why someone would be off TV? That's especially was supposed to wrestle yeah. in, in a week as right, like right. the main event of your second biggest pay per view, uh, and then never hear from her ever again. It's got to be something like that. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. I'll watch it tonight. Uh, uh, I'm I'm more interested. It's funny because we watch AEW because we enjoy it. We can't wait every Wednesday. I'm actually watching this to see how bad it's going to be oh, and how this is, mad it's going to make me. We're, we're, <laughs> like, we're totally slowing down to see the train wreck. This is all this is. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, we're so, ru we're rubbernecking so tonight it with each other later, right? Yeah, I no think, doubt. I feel like we almost want it to be as bad as possible, so we have an excuse not to watch it going forward because there's so many, yes. there's so much wrestling as it is. I'd rather like take that two hours on another night uh, towards something else, whether it be like if you want to start talking about wrestling uh, on a semi regular basis. Uh, whether it's at the end of a podcast or, or just set one aside for wrestling talk, uh, I would recommend if we're doing a special episode every week, you're going to have to start writing notes down. Uh, so that might immediately change your mind. But, uh, you know, like Ring of Honor, Impact, I don't think we watch those on a regular basis. Uh, you know, New Japan, all that kind of stuff. Uh, at least I, it would give us an excuse to watch it. I know we always would like to, but there's only so much time, so yeah. You know. No, I uh, I would love to just because 
You can talk about it. Yeah, I, I may start. Well, we'll see. Let's start tonight. Let's see how upset we get. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to be upset because we've given, we we have pretty much written this off. There's no like, we have yeah, no true, emotional true. investment to get the rug pulled out from under us and get heartbroken or upset or mad. And it's been right. it's been a mess for way too long. All right, bud. Yep. Well, uh, all right. I'm done with you. I got I got to go pick up the kids from school and eat a cookie on the way. So, <laughs> what kind of cookie? You know, M M&M and M chocolate chip from Publix. 